John saw, John saw of the glancing of the sun. He said, This is the land who gave out his life and who took all the way the sins of the world. This is the land. God's hidden agenda exposed. First Bible lesson, Matthew 1, 22 and 23. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Second Bible lesson, Luke 1, 10-13. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Golden Text, Matthew 11:11. 11, 11. Verily I say unto you, Among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The Mysterious God, Introductory Courses He has come, he has come to rule the world. He has come in a hidden way, yet the world is looking for Him. It is only the King who knows the secret of His kingdom. Beloved, the texts and spiritual choruses from the theme of our lesson, the Scripture has made it clear that the people of the world would look but would not see. They would listen but would not hear because their hearts are hardened. They are those who have no share in the kingdom of God. The presence of the kingdom of God on earth is something the whole world should remain in total submission to the Creator of heaven and earth. The world cannot behold the glory of this kingdom. None in the flesh can listen or even understand the teachings of this kingdom. This is because here in the kingdom of God it is only His wisdom, love, power, patience and all the virtues that reign supreme. Exalted position in the world. Materialism or structure has no place at all. If you like, fast for many days as you may please. Weep and lament, you cannot witness the kingdom except you are called. No matter how frequent you may pray and shout at the top of your voice, you cannot behold or feel the impact of this kingdom. At the same time, it is there in earnest. No matter how effective you argue and cause trouble, and no matter how convincing your argument may be, you cannot ordinarily see or observe His kingdom. No matter the extent of vigorous campaign you may wish to engage in against the kingdom of God and its existence, it is all in vain. After all, so did your fathers and forefathers, and finally they all perished. But the truth has continued to live and grow since then. Whatever is happening today has already been destined to come to pass. It is said that only the king knows the secret of his kingdom. The past generations were ignorant of this kingdom. Zechariah and his wife, Mary, Joseph, John, and even Jesus Christ had no knowledge of this kingdom. It is only the Father who knows and understands the events in the world, and He alone can reveal the secrets of His kingdom to whoever He pleases. You are a tool in God's hand. God can use you to fulfill His divine will without your notice. What is most surprising is man's ignorance of God's ability, wisdom, and power. At any time, God uses a man or a group of people to fulfill His divine purpose none would be aware of the actual source of the event. None would know that it is God who is responsible for what is happening. In spite of human ignorance over God's affairs and kingdom, yet He continues to exist and His kingdom continues to grow. 
This explains why he is called the mysterious God. Everything about him is wonderful and mysterious. Even with his words, as read in the texts, there is none who can give the correct interpretations and meaning. Right from the time of Adam till now, there is none that knows himself or understands the events around him. None is aware of the kingdom of God. None can also understand the meanings of his actions and utterance. Man can be compared to the grass in the field that is swayed to and fro by the wind. You claim to go to church, yet you do not even know the meaning of church. Nobody knows his right from left. Sometimes we get confused of the being we are serving, whether he is God or Satan. If he were not so enigmatic, then he would not be a wonderful God. Should anyone be able to predict him, he would cease to be God. In other words, if it were possible for a man to know him easily, then he would not be God. I can mention names right from Adam to the time of Christ and describe them one after the other to prove to you that none of them knew God. God alone is the beginning and the end. This is why we are enjoined to honor and fear Him, for He is a wonderful God. But how can you honor and fear one you do not actually know? He is forever the only one who honors and worships Himself. It is only Him that also glorifies Himself. Man is enjoined to reverence God and praise His name. How can we do that? Man, on his own alone, is like a robot. He is senseless, deaf, blind, and incapable of doing anything. How, then, can such a creature reverence or praise his Creator? There is a particular group of people who do not believe in God. They believe God should be killed if at all He exists, that He should be rejected, disgraced, dispraised, and dishonored. Is it possible to do such thing to a person one does not know and see? How can you reject, dishonor, disgrace, and despise the being you do not know? Why People Doubt BCS It is really hard for one to believe that brotherhood of the cross and star is the kingdom of God. Part of the reason is that the attitude of some members leave much to be desired. They make a lot of noise while they are gathered to worship God. They quarrel, fight, and cause all sorts of trouble thus making it hard to believe that the fold is in the kingdom of God. On the other hand, there are those who openly confess to others that brotherhood is the kingdom of Satan. But if you come in so as to confirm what you have been told, you would discover that there is nothing satanic here at all. It was this same false accusation that made the people to doubt and reject John the Baptist and Jesus Christ. A Mysterious Father they do so because they know them not. Even John himself, who heralded the arrival of our Lord Jesus Christ, later doubted him when he, John, was thrown into prison. There in prison he sent a message to Christ to confirm from him whether he was really the Savior or not. This proves the fact that it is the Father alone that can reveal himself and bear eloquent testimony about himself. Christ himself, while on the cross, shouted, My God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? That proves to you that even Christ doubt the Father. This also shows to you that it is not an easy thing to behold God. The more you look, the less you would see him. Elijah, who was assured that he would not taste of death, once shouted and called upon God that the enemies had destroyed all his prophets and temple, that he was the only one left. He prayed God to send down fire to consume the people. God, in his reply, told him that he had reserved 7,000 disciples for himself who had never worshipped Baal. God alone exists. Therefore, man is incapable of doing anything. We are blind, deaf, lame, foolish, and non-existent. People all over the world claim to worship God through various methods and means. There are others still who believe that God does not exist at all. All of these conflict of opinions notwithstanding, God continues to carry out His divine will steadily and to manifest His kingdom. Preaching the gospel, per se, does not change any man. 
On the other hand, failure to preach the gospel is not enough ground to condemn any person. Whether or not you pray, clap, or sing cannot alter God's arrangements. Whether or not human beings believe in Him, God continues to be God and to be ever true. Man himself and his actions remain and cannot move anything. Whatever God has planted must stand and nothing that is planted by man can stand. Zechariah was a high priest who served God diligently day and night. In spite of his position, yet he had cause to doubt God. On the fateful day that the news of his begetting a child in his life got to him, he doubted the possibility because he and Elizabeth, his wife, were advanced in age. Have you realized the reason why I pity the world? Each time I look at the whole world, particularly human beings, I laugh at them. This is the kingdom of God. The disciples of John reported to him that the man who was baptized by him and had been with him was going about on his own and his disciples baptizing people also. John replied them, saying, No man can have anything except such as given to him from above. But in the world, the people erroneously think and believe that whatever a man does is purely of his own making. For instance, if one goes to school or embark on any other venture is out of his own accord. Therefore, brethren, this is to bring to your understanding that heaven and earth will pass away, but not a jot or little of the word of God shall pass away until all be fulfilled. Whether you believe in the existence of God or not does not matter. He had existed and shall continue to exist. Our beliefs and utterances have no effect over His existence. This explains the reason why he said in the scripture that the kingdom is not meant for one who runs a race or him that seeks for it, but out of God's own grace. It was because of this fact that God himself exalted Pharaoh in order that he may use him to manifest his will and to glorify himself. Moreover, he also said that he is merciful upon whom he pleases and hardens his heart against whom he so feels. The question is where does man stand? Does he exist at all? Paul himself, who greatly propagated the gospel of Christ, cried to God for three good times to depart from him so that he might die. He prayed God to take away his soul. Instead, God told him that his grace was sufficient to him always. Paul prayed for death, but instead God granted him life. Read the first lesson again. First Bible Lesson, Matthew 1, 22 and 23 Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. When the Lord Speaks Brethren, The above text proves the fact that no prophet of God will fail to fulfill God, does not execute his plans in order to be praised or thanked or recognized by man. He does his things according to his will and glory, irrespective of whether man believes in him or not. Nobody believed or took seriously the prophecy spoken by Jeremiah while he lived and even thereafter. But whether the world believed in him or not, The prophet, as revealed to Jeremiah by God, has all come to pass. He is the truth, and his word is true. God honors his words and does not joke with his statements. It is therefore necessary that you should not toy with the word of God. Your level of belief in him is not considered because man hardly believes in God or in his words. You could be told in a revelation that a particular thing will happen, But before it comes into effect, you had forgotten about it because you doubted its occurrence outrightly. It is for this reason that it is often said, when all hopes have failed, the Redeemer appears. He is ever faithful and ever sure. The manifestation of the kingdom of God in our midst is not an indication of man's worthiness or righteousness, but the fulfillment of God's promise. His real name is ever true and ever sure. From Genesis to the revelation of John, there is no single prophecy that will fail to be fulfilled. He does not do anything for the sake of our worthiness or persistent prayer, 
but because it pleases him to do so for his glory. He does not take any angel or man into reckoning as he implements his will. In other words, God is not influenced by the opinions and attitudes of men, the angels or other creatures. Therefore, if it pleases him for you to thank and praise him, you will definitely do so if it pleases him that you should not hear, see, and understand his kingdom, nothing you can do to change the order. The world had since lost hope of existence and the coming of the Savior. It was at the point which man had completely forgotten him that he quietly arrived. He did this to fulfill his promises that a virgin would bear a child whose name would be Emmanuel, the Savior of mankind. Therefore, what is left of all his words and prophecies are to be fulfilled. Whether we stand firm or not, it is to his glory. All those who are arrogant, those that weep, lament, or laugh to scorn are fools. Brethren, have you not observed that the glory and kingdom of God have eluded the whole world? The birth of John the Baptist and that of Christ has so confused and troubled the world. Herod went all out to destroy John at birth. When he failed to capture John, he sent his soldiers to go and behead Zechariah in the temple. That is exactly the situation in the world. Did that event prevent God's will from being manifested? It is therefore out of foolishness that man thinks, the word of God would not spread or be fulfilled. The word of God had already been preached and had been fulfilled to. God has not empowered or granted wisdom to either man or angel to alter His divine will. The Cause and Effect of All Things Power and wisdom remain in God's hands. We should therefore honor God, fear Him, glorify Him, and praise His name. We are those that have been destined to worship Him in spirit and in truth. It is only the true worshipers who know that He is the beginning and the end the author and finisher of our faith, the cause and effect of everything. We are not the Sadducees, Pharisees, the publicans, nor the heathens. We are the true children of God and the kingdom of God. We follow Him sheepishly because it was written that those chosen shall follow Him in that manner. Before the world was, the kingdom had been. It has continued to exist since then and shall ever exist. Read the second lesson again. Second Bible lesson, Luke 1, 10-13 And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense, and there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias. For thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. The Unshakable Faith in God The above text has proved that Zechariah, who was a high priest of God, was not only afraid, but also disbelieved the prophecy because of ignorance. The disbelief and faithlessness arose from the fact that he had done everything humanly possible to raise a child through Elizabeth to no avail. He finally resigned to fate. One of our spiritual songs asked this question, Who will receive God's grace and who will not? The response to this is that the children of God will receive the grace of God day and night. He rewarded them with a child when they had lost hope. God gave them a child that was greater than millions of children. You will therefore realize that the thoughts and deeds of God are quite different from those of human beings. His wisdom, power, and ways are different from those of men. Do not ask God for anything. Do not ask God for wisdom, for Solomon did so and finally lived a foolish and abominable life, and consequently perished. Solomon was the cause of the fall of Babylon. Do not pray God for power, for the people of old had asked for it, and it was misused to victimize and destroy God's creation. Do not also ask God for love, for the people of old and even those of the present generation have misused the love given to them. Man has turned the love of God for his fellow human to material things. This has caused man's fall. 
It is for this reason that you are advised not to keep your treasure or precious thing before the swine or dogs, otherwise they will trample upon it and destroy it. He is all-sufficient to everyone. He cares for all of us. He loves us and sustains us at all times. Therefore, we are one with Him. He is our representative, and we too are His representatives. Let us continue to recognize Him as the only Head, Teacher, and Savior. When the Father declared that He would establish His kingdom in the world and that His name shall be praised in all the four corners of the world, many doubted the possibility. Some, in their ignorance, wonder whether He will begin this. The whole world is now busy gazing into the sky, expecting Christ to descend to the earth. The question is, if He descends as expected by the world, what would be the reaction of His enemies? Would they allow Him to touch the ground? At what particular spot would He land? Now that He has taken the world by surprise, when all people have lost all hopes of His coming, are His enemies aware of this development? He has come as a thief, as the Son of Man, as the Son of God, and as God Himself. He has come as the Holy Spirit, but how many people know Him? All the children of God, right from the time of Adam till this present time of the Holy Spirit, have all reincarnated to reign with their Father. All the angels and all the past patriarchs are here on earth. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are also here. Do people believe in Him? Or has man's disbelief prevent his existence or to fulfill his divine will? Nobody ever knew nor believed in Christ just as the world did not believe in John the Baptist. It is for this reason that you were advised not to seek for money and other material things. Do not come to the Father for the purpose of getting wealth, for God knows that you desire it. The Gentiles desired all these things and missed the glory of God. All that you are to do is to surrender yourself to Him and His will. Except He sends you on an errand you cannot go, and except He does a particular thing, none can do it. If He does not seek for you, you cannot follow Him. And if He does not reveal Himself to you, you cannot know Him. Apart from God, none can save you. The time of foolishness had since passed and gone forever. The time when people relied on the success of human interventions through scientific and technological discoveries as a means of salvation has ceased. The government, money, your parents, and material acquisitions cannot save you. The only source of salvation is in God. If you cast your mind back to the times of Adam, Nebuchadnezzar, Pharaoh, Herod, and all the kings that reigned in the past, and then ask yourself of their whereabouts and how they ended up, you would be in a better position to reorder your priorities in this generation. Read the Golden Text again. Golden Text, Matthew 11, 11. Verily I say unto you, Among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Heaven Now on Earth the above text reveals the nature of the gift of God. Do not expect any human being to glorify you. Do not seek for anything from a human being. Whatever comes from God is the best. The truth will last forever. Anything that is not of God is shaky and shall be uprooted at the appropriate time. In spite of the powers and principalities that existed in the world and their various kingdoms, none of them was as great and powerful and prominent as John the Baptist not to talk about Lord Jesus Christ. Man has invented and initiated into various cults and have stopped at nothing to amass wealth at the expense of his fellow man in order to gain fame. John did none of these things, yet he was the greatest amongst men. He neither married nor gave in marriage. He never indulged in anything mundane. It was as a result of his godly life that he was exalted far above other men on earth except the least person in heaven. John the Baptist and Celibacy Our point of concern is about holiness and celibacy. John did not put on shoes, clothes, nor own a house. He completely disassociated himself from the worldly pleasures. He abandoned his parents for the sake of God. Who is like John in the whole world? Can you mention just one person who resembles John right from his age to this present generation? 
In your own case, your preoccupation is money. You think about how to build a house, marry, own a car, beautiful dresses, chain of business ventures, and other material things. John was able to live above the whole world. Has anybody been sued to court for not eating meat and fish? Neither a father nor a mother can surrender his or her life for the child. In the same token, a husband cannot lay down his life for his wife, nor will his wife be able to do it. But Christ came and gave up his precious life for a ransom for all. Christ represents love, while John stands for faith. It is through faith that we are changed from the lust for mundane things to spiritual gifts in order to fit with the Holy Spirit. If you cannot resemble John the Baptist, how can you gain the kingdom of God? In the kingdom of brotherhood of the cross and star, who is like John? And in the whole world, who is like John? Faith and patience represent God. Apart from our Lord Jesus Christ, John the Baptist is the greatest of all those born of a woman, and he is the greatest in the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ is the greatest because he gave his life as ransom for many. A man may love his wife, and the wife may love her husband. Parents may love their children, and vice versa. Yet none of them would give up his or her life for the sake of others. Christ did this for our salvation. He was humble, kind, merciful, and tolerant. Christ is love, and He is the author of love and all virtues. John the Baptist is faith and preached about repentance so that we would be able to acquire love. This explains why Christ said that, Except a man is born of water and of the Spirit, he will not inherit the kingdom of God. Except you copy John the Baptist and denounce every mundane thing, you will not enter into the kingdom of God. Take his yoke upon you and learn of him. Even here in brotherhood, who is like John? Who is this in the world that has forsaken materialism? Our target, therefore, is to completely refrain from the things of this world. That also is the kingdom of God and the qualification into it. It is repentance that can lead you into love. Apart from God sending down His only begotten Son, there is none who would have been able to accomplish this task of bringing salvation to mankind. You should remember that beautiful women had existed in those days. So also were handsome men, expensive apparels, and beautiful houses. Of all these things, John the Baptist did not have interest in any. This is why you are enjoined to refrain from the lust for materialism and surrender yourself to God, so that you may inherit the kingdom of God. How would you be able to serve God diligently if you fail to refrain yourself from the things of this world? If you fail to surrender yourself to God, love one another, be merciful, humble yourself, truthful, and be kind, how would you be able to inherit the kingdom of God? Since the world was created, Christ is the only one who gave up His life as a ransom for the salvation of all. He is the first and only person who sought for the good of others. John the Baptist put to naught the things of this world and demonstrated complete denial of materialism. Christ then came with a lot of goodies to seek for the salvation of others. Therefore, this kingdom of God is made up of these virtues. Whether you are a president, a millionaire, a professor, or scientist, it is meaningless. Whatever your status in the world, it amounts to nothing here in the kingdom of God. What is uppermost is total abstinence from the things of this world. You must seek for the good of others. It is only when you graduate from John's teachings that you will get into Christ's. The ability to do this comes from no one else apart from God Himself. He is the only one to fulfill His promise, which is the hidden agenda and the acceptable order of things for us in this kingdom. In short, this is exactly what we should aim at to accomplish. Brethren, it is said a stroke of Cain is sufficient for the wise. May the Lord bless His holy words. Amen. Thank you, Father. Brotherhood of the Cross and Star by leader and teacher Alumba Alumba Abu Compiled by George Morales sins of the world. This is the Lamb who gave out his life who took all away. 
world. The sins of the world. The sins of the world. Those who came before him were thieves, they were robbers. He said, This is the Lord who gave out his life to save all the way around the sins of the world. This is the Lord who gave out his life to save all the way around the sins of the world. Of the world. Those he calls are those he has chosen.